Okay, we have some interesting math today. We've got the integral from zero to infinity, three to the minus x cubed dx. Now, I don't really remember ever doing anything quite like this, although it does make me think of the Gaussian integral. For the Gaussian integral, we've got the same bounds. It's going zero to infinity, e minus x squared dx. And actually the full Gaussian integral is minus infinity to infinity, but a lot of times you see it like this, zero to infinity. The value for this is gonna be just square root of pi over two. Well, first of all, the exponent we have here is not two, we've got a three there. But this I can actually handle because I did a video not too far back, a generalized Gaussian integral for this. And we came up with a formula for this expression. It wasn't square root of pi over two anymore. It's gonna be a different value, but we can have a formula for this. But now still our base no longer is e. Now we've got a three here. So what we need is we need the value for something of a different form like a to the minus x over n. So what I'm thinking is let's find the general formula for this thing. And then at the end of the video, we can come back and we can plug in threes to it and see if we can get a decent answer. Okay, now to get started with this, what I want to do first is just deal with this base. We don't really like having the base as a, we want to have the base be e. So what I can do is use this formula. We can write a just e to the ln a. And so you can already see that we're heading back towards the Gaussian integral again, but let's just update this. So what we're going to do, so for this, let's use exponent properties on this. I can write this. We'll now have e as our base. This is going to become minus ln a. Well, it times x to the n dx. And then here, all I wanna do is let's clean up this exponent because that's kind of a lot to deal with right there. So I'll do a u substitution for all that. Let's say u is gonna be ln a x to the n. And then let's just solve for x if I divide by ln a on both sides, this will cancel off. Then to isolate x, let's take this, but we're gonna want like the nth root. So I can write this as u ln a all to the one over n. And so then let's just take a derivative on this. So for dx, First, we use power rule, so we'll have 1 over n, u, ln, a, 1 over n minus 1, and then we need chain rule on this, another 1 over ln, a pops out, and then this is going to be du. But before we substitute, let's see if I can clean it up a little bit, just consolidating these ln, a's. So I think, so if I break that out separately as 1 over ln, a to the 1 over n minus 1 times 1 over ln, a, then exponent properties, we add these together and we get 1 over ln a to the 1 over n. So then I'll rewrite this dx value as 1 over n. I'm going to split everything up. I'm going to split this u out separately. So we'll have u, 1 over n minus 1, and then we'll have this stuff, 1 over ln a to the 1 over n du. Okay, so now we're ready to substitute with all the values we have over here to the right. So first, so first updating our bounds, when you plug in infinity, it's still going to be infinity. You plug in zero there, that's just gonna be zero. Then what we did on this is this whole thing transforms to just e to the minus u. And then we need our dx value here. I can get rid of this one. First for the one over n, let's bring that out front as a constant. Then we'll have this u, one over n minus one, and then our natural log piece, one over ln a to the one over n. But this right here is a constant as well. I probably should have just did this in one step, but let's bring this out front of the integral as a constant as well. And then at this point, what you'll notice is everything we have right here, this is perfectly set up for the gamma function. Our input on this is gonna be just this exponent right here. So this whole integral is just gonna boil down to just gamma of one over n. And so just like that, we're at our solution. I can write it a little bit different. We have one over n, gamma of one over n. And if you saw that other video, you might recognize it because this was actually our solution to that generalized gamma function when the base was e. But here we have this other part. I'll just write this as the nth root of ln a. And so that's gonna be our formula. But one other way we could do this, we also have a nice formula for the gamma function. If we had say, let's see, typically like if it's written like this, if you have gamma of n plus one, this is gonna be the same thing as n times gamma of n. So using on this going in reverse, we can just add one to it and write this as gamma of one over n plus one over the same stuff here. So now getting back to our problem here, what we have is our n value is gonna be just three and our a value is gonna be also three. So plugging into our formula, I think I'll use this one here. We can write this as, I'll write it as gamma one third over, we'll bring the n to the denominator over three cube root 
natural log of three, and that's it. And I think I'll write it the other way too. If we want to write it this way, if you prefer it this way, we can write this as gamma of four thirds over cube root ln three. And with this formula, it's still gonna work when the base is E because natural log of E is just one, so the denominator goes away and you get just the, the top part for the formula. And so actually for the case of just the Gaussian interval, we have A is gonna be equal to E in the formula and N is gonna be equal to two. If you plug that in here, like I said, the denominator goes away, you end up within the numerator one half gamma of one half, but gamma of one half is just square root of pi. So we end up here with square root of pi over two. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.